Welcome to the show, everybody. Fiesta Friday is the name. I'm Jason Salas. So glad you could join us tonight because we'll be bringing back in our friends from Remax Diamond Realty once again, and they'll be telling you all about the wonderful products and properties that you can avail of if you're looking for residential or commercial here. That's coming up. But first, we are going to talk to you about Talentown. It is the film, a documentary, to be precise, that is sweeping the island right now. Everybody's talking about it, and I am very lucky to have two of the three, two thirds. Yeah. of the Creative Brain Trust behind us, the trifecta, Indeed. if you will. Uh, oh, hey. Don Munya and J.D. Iriard, two, two good friends of mine. So, gentlemen, congratulations Happy first, you know, because we're not doing this as a teaser leading up to the film's right. release. Practically everybody has seen it right now, and I have yet to hear a even what would be remotely considered anything a criticism. Everybody thinks it's beautifully shot, it's lushly laid out and everything like that. So before we get into the, the actual film and everything, tell me what has the feedback been as far as you guys are concerned? Nothing but positive, really. I mean, um, uh, mostly people saying that the film is inspirational, um, just good stuff. No negative feedback, thank goodness, you know. And that was like always, uh, you know, as a filmmaker, that's always the the scare. Mm -hmm. You you just put something out there and you you're just pacing back and forth before a premiere, and, and you just hope. And well, pray. Jake, your, your own contribution to the project. You've been known as someone here on the island who always <laughs> goes for you know the, the high impact production and you right. know like big entertainment value, mm -hmm. and you know you aim to please your audience in whatever, yeah, whatever capacity and everything. Well, so first and foremost, I'd like to say thank you for having us here, Jason. And you know yeah. what, we do appreciate everything you do. I mean, you're a huge talent on this island that everyone needs to definitely make sure they appreciate because I don't think most of them even understand what it takes for you to come out here every day and do what you do. So first of all, thank you to you for uh, doing what you do with uh, you. everything in media and uh, here in Guam, man. We appreciate that. I got the easiest job on Guam. <laughs> <laughs> for you. <laughs> but no, man, um, exactly that. I mean, we, we, we really did decide when, when this film first came about, well, uh, the Munya brothers, I mean, first of all, they are the most brilliant ma minds on Guam when it comes to the movies and, and film and cinema for the island. And so the fact that they brought me on to be able to be a part of their, their team and their vision was uh, was just a great blessing uh, to begin with. And when this when they came up with the idea for Talent Town, I thought it was just completely brilliant. And uh, when when I first started seeing the uh, the the dailies, and then when I started seeing, then I first got the full screening of the film, uh, I knew that they someone would have to be crazy not to think that this was just a wonderful good thing because all of our hearts, our minds were in the right place to make this film because. It's good, and yeah. it's a good thing. It's about a good thing, and it's to be able to only promote good. So if there's only good coming from it, if anyone's to think anything other other than good about it, would be otherwise. Mm. And so um, the fact mm. that we are getting good feedback, it only means that we've done the, the right thing. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Well, Don, as a creative person, I, uh, two part question to ask you. Okay. As you're putting this film together, how do you prevent? I want to say, you know, like what we in the software industry called like feature creep, which is, you know, you have all these other ideas feature that you want to creep. throw in there tangentially and, and say like, okay, now I've got another idea how this can go. And then how you kind of rein yourself back and say, we have to stick to our original vision and everything like that because we're going to miss our deadlines. We're going to be way over budget and everything like that. So how do you, how do you actually hold yourself back from, you know, bringing in other ideas? Well, you know, we actually don't, <laughs> you know, and that's probably, that's our biggest problem. But I think at the same it's time, a good problem to have. <laughs> yeah, at the same time, you know, that's what keeps us creating and that's what keeps our process fluid and and I think that's what made the film so unique and so powerful is that we were able to um, just let it let it go and let it take a shape of its own and a life of its own um, so we don't we don't try to hold back anything we we just let let it build on top of each other mm -hmm. and um, in terms of like the deadlines like meeting deadlines um, we're pretty good at that, you know. We 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 kind of pad it out and say, hey, let's. We uh, just a quick secret: the movie was supposed to be done like in May, mm -hmm. like or was it April or something? Yeah. Real earlier this year. So yeah. we always give ourselves like three three months out. It's just well, a little mental trick. You actually took the words right out of my mouth, Don. And you know, we'll go to JD for the next question because I was going to say, you know, um, how long from project conception and inception, if you will, um, mm -hmm. all the way until the final cut was, you know, was we finished and everything like that. How long was the process? We average about a year for, for uh, our projects. Um, and it really depends on, you know, the nature and the style of, of, uh, of the film. You know, mm -hmm. obviously if you're doing a narrative um, versus documentary, it's more, it's more of a refined process and you have to do a lot of preparation and pre-production, whereas documentary is just run and gun and you capture the moment mm -hmm. right there as it happens. Mm -hmm. So uh, about a year 
for Talent Town. Mm. Now, how would you say JD has, what, um, as far as the creative direction for this film? Because mm -hmm. um, you know we've interviewed so many documentary documentarians on the program and everything, and, and some people say you know like they've got a very specific political angle to take, and they want people to feel a certain way. Other people are just like completely hands off, and they're like, I'm just going to tell a story, like Don just said, and, right. you know, let the audience decide what they're going to do. But what do you think people will take away from this film after watching it? Well, the, the, the beautiful thing, well, first of all, to expand on what, what uh, you were asking with Don, I think Kel was a major part of that as well. You know, mm -hmm. Kel is the, is, is, he's the editor, and he's, um, he's the one that's keeping the pace with that, and we, we keep him padded and, uh, and protected to be able to have the time to do that. And, uh, you know, and Kel is, is a creative genius, and so the fact that, d that he's not here, it's unfortunate, but I mean, yeah, I want to make sure that people understood that Kel was a big part of making sure that we were able to stay on schedule. And no surprise, because he's working. No surprise, exactly, <laughs> right now. Um, then to go back to your question about uh, what were people to expect, it's a beautiful thing because, uh, you know, Talent Town, we, we went out there and we did have it be a little or organic in the sense we asked a lot of people a lot of the same questions and it was, it was astounding to see everyone have very similar answers and, and have the same similar struggles. And so the, for the storyline to be able to to be able to crescendo and tell its own story, we mm -hmm. it actually kind of just did it on its own organically. Nice. And uh, of course, with the creative uh, editing of Kel, who had the the job of watching everything. You know, we got to record it. We, you know, I got to help make some of the uh, appointments and uh, the connections and the meetings. Don shot it. You know, he's the the director behind all of it. Uh, but Kel, at the end of the day, is the one that had to rewatch everything and be able to ha make it into a cohesive story. And that's a huge huge part of, of the production and, and the fact yes. that everyone had the same similar message and a lot of the same uh, answers, yeah. you know, I believe that what the people are going to take away is exactly what everyone in the, that, that were interviewed in the movie meant to convey was, you know. Okay, well, we'll tell you what, hold that thought because when yeah. we come back, we're going to talk to the Munir brothers and JD, or one half of the Munir brothers, I should say, Don and Munier JD, brother. about uh, the creative and stylistically and technologically the inputs that went into making this film. So stay tuned. We'll back after this.